Okay. One of the questions that gets asked sometimes is, why can't the machine test whole blood? Well, the reason why it can't test whole blood, I'm going to explain here in a minute. It's the way that it's set up. All right. When you do a hospital blood test, it's an enzymatic method involving a reagent. It's colorimetric and uh, spectrometry uh, based upon infrared or Beer's law. And what does that mean? The most important thing to take away is this slide that's up here. It is not selective and it's not specific. And what I mean by that is that it is not something much like, much different than this right here. This is not selective. It's not specific. It's not, it's so bad that if you had dark chocolate, I'm from nearby Hershey. I didn't bring down a Hershey bar this time. You put a Hershey bar in this thing, you put crushed up Tylenol PM uh, inside of here, you put in a lot of things, it can come back as a false positive. Same thing that happens here. And the biggest source of interference is by what's called lactate. And we're going to show you why. Lactate is what you're looking for. Ringer's lactate is an IV solution that's given during trauma or when they think someone's going to go into shock. If you've ever seen any of the ER emergency rooms, it's what they're sitting there and they give in the person's arm and they're carrying through and everything like that. It's called fluid resuscitation. And what it does is it's pumping through a bunch of electrolytes and lactated ringers in hopes that you don't go into shock and not die of your injuries, but die of shock. And so it is almost universally used in every single accident case that's out there and any sort of injury that's out there. But it gets better than that. It gets infused. And what I mean by that is they oftentimes put them in both arms and they sit there and they squeeze the bags in order to get it into your blood as quickly as possible. Okay. So that's how you get the administration of lactate. So what you need to do is when you have an accident case that involves an emergency room and an enzymatic assay testing, hospital blood testing, and that's how they're trying to get your client, what you need to do is you need to take a look at the, uh, take a look at the admission charts that go in there because they should be recording what's in each person's uh, lines as they come in. But more importantly, most useful that I find is subpoenaing the, uh, the ambulance crew. Um, and they have their own documentation that's out there and also their replacements so you can know specifically because as soon as they're done using that lactated ringers they have to order a new one. Um, so that's the type of thing that you should be taking a look at. Two other things. What else releases lactate? Trauma. Soft tissue trauma, hard tissue trauma. If you have, uh, if you're in a car accident and you break your leg, especially like your femur, um, then it will release trauma. If you are beat up, um, you know, in, if it's anything, if, if it's soft tissue damage inside, you know, like the steering wheel hits your, hits your ribs and cracks your ribs or hurts you, that can release lactate. Remember the words TCA? TCA is that tube where they got the deprotonizing agent. Believe it or not, by the very process of adding TCA, you release lactate. So think about that. That means that every single time that you're using TCA, you're going to be jacking up your BAC result. Tell me how fair that is. Okay? So it's impossible to tell what is alcohol and what is lactate, and I'll show you why. So the conclusion for hospital blood is it's not selective, it's not specific, it's certainly not forensic, and it belongs nowhere inside of a courtroom whatsoever. All right, we're all at least familiar with the way that a breath test machine works, an infrared breath test machine in particular. And that's based upon IR or infrared and based upon uh, Beer's law, the principle of Beer's law. So you have an infrared light source. And the way that it's supposed to do, according to Beer's law, is as it goes through the sample chamber, if there's nothing interfering with it, then when it hits the detector at the end of the day, it should be at the same exact intensity. So the arrow does not become smaller. It becomes, it, it, it remains the same. So again, as it's going through, there's nothing there to interfere with it. The same amount of energy hits the detector. All right, we all know that because you guys are a great breath testing state. If you put in a molecule of interest, let's say alcohol inside that sample chamber, it interferes with it and it shakes it up, kind of, 
it's asymmetric. And then the amount that it starts out with is decreased because the energy is absorbed by that particular molecule as it hits the detector. That's how you know how much alcohol or what they say the principle of, of infrared breath testing is based upon. No different in hospital blood testing. In hospital blood testing, it's based upon, again, that uptake that involved. This is the, uh, the spectra of ethanol. This is the wavelengths of what, if you were to take it out over the entire uh, spectrum as far as what it looks like. As we've probably been exposed to before, and I only use it just to illustrate here how bad has hospital blood testing is, with an intoxilizer 5000, or most of the other models that are out there, it's a three filter process or a five filter process, meaning that it is designed to take a look at certain, um, certain wavelengths at certain points in time that may not be unique to alcohol. In fact, it's designed not to look for ones that are unique to alcohol as opposed to anything else that comes out there. But it's a three, the most important thing is it's a three or five filter process. It's looking at three areas or five areas. Hospital blood testing looks at one. One. It is less specific and it is more junk because it only looks at that one wavelength. It only looks at the 340 wavelength that is there. 